Bump, bump. Welcome to as art dot space. Hold on to your butts. Welcome back to as art with Nick and John. Today we're going to talk about Jojo Rabbit. Yes. <laughs> so this is a fun movie. Well, it's not fun. I don't know. Go ahead, John. You can, in you can intro. <laughs> Yeah, so so Kate, my wife, and I, before it was even out, we just saw the first trailer and we're like, well, this is going to be hilarious. And we, we <laughs> couldn't wait to see it. And then we were in the process of moving, so we never got to see it in, you know, until it, the end of its theater run, until it's basically on this Oscar you know, nomination run. Uh -huh. And finally got to see it. And if you guys have been listening to the podcast up to this point, typically, if I go in with low expectations, a lot of times I'm surprised. But then sometimes if I go in with high expectations, I very, very minimally or very seldom am pleased to the point that I hope I am. And I came out of this film just like, this is even better than I thought it was going to be. This is wonderful. <laughs> so do you want to give a little bit of a synopsis? Because I think you can probably wrap it up pretty so, well. So, um, yes, it's about, uh, first of all, the film opens with like, um, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. you know how like, um, is it Fox Searchlight or whatever? With mm -hmm. the drums, yeah, sure, sure. And then, yeah. So mm -hmm. basically, you hear the drums, but then the music doesn't even kick in. So it's like already weird, like like it's already not doing that. And then it kicks into, I think, a Beatles "I Want to Hold Your Hand" in German, and it's like in playing, German, yeah. And it's playing on like this. It's in a Beatle mania. It's like Hitler mania, and like how everyone's yeah. going crazy for Hitler. And it's just like already putting the perspective of the mindset of like where mm -hmm. this is going. And then basically, we follow. It's about JoJo. Jojo goes to, I guess, uh, Hitler Youth Camp. And then um, after a uh, grenade injury. They, they really did have Hitler Youth oh, yes. Camp. So they, it wasn't called Hitler Youth Camp, but they had things where they'd go to basically the Nazi party before, you know, it was. So after World War I, Germany wasn't allowed to have a, its own army, like, like actual political, like state army or national army. But as part of small groups, like side groups, they were allowed to have these like, like personal armies. And that's how Hitler kind of rose up was through that group. But I forgot the name, but so they used to have these things. They'd send off young boys. So anyway, and then, and obviously the, the Nazis had a big, like yes. kind of little school where they train kids. So go ahead and yes, continue. So it's, Sorry, it's all interrupt. about branding. And that's when we learn their views on the whole Jewish notion and how the, mm -hmm. their mind perceives that and how they think in a very better. comedic fashion yes very wes anderson like at first i feel like mm, that whole yeah. portion and until like he gets blown up is like a wes anderson movie because like <laughs> everything kind of changes like it, because maybe it reminds me of uh what's the one on the when they're on an island is it moon moonlight kingdom oh i can't remember but uh, uh the the boy scout one yeah or the cub yeah, scout one yeah, yeah that's that what one. i thought of too yeah yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. very like reminiscent like with the flat you know the flat shots and the framing mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. way the camera pans and like the, even the quirkiness of the humor just re really reminds and so who's it directed by film. give them some background on who it's directed by uh taka wakiti i think that's how you say his name yeah but um one of my favorite movies of his was um, um what we do in the dark right what we do in the shadows i think it's shadows, about like yes. it's like a, a docu series on a group of vampires that live together. I think like the first shot, like the alarm clock goes off. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, so, yeah I, so I didn't know it was him, but I I just I, I saw it and I'm like, oh, this is kind of like The Office, but it's an apartment with all kinds of vampires. I thought it was hilarious, and oh, you, I didn't favorite. know that you had seen it. You didn't know that I had seen it, but it's a great movie. Yeah, oh, so it's so, same guy, so awesome. same guy that did. Um, what else he's, did he do? Thor more, Ragnarok, right? Yeah, he's more known for the Thor Thor Ragnarok. And I think yeah. he's doing the next, I think it's called like Thor love and thunder or something like that. Uh -huh. I think he's doing the, the, next like the, the really cheesy comedy Marvel movies, right? Yeah. He really went, I think, which, I think his comedy went a little over the top in the Marvel stuff. Yeah. Which I, I wasn't a fan of the Thor one, but that what we do in the shadows and especially Jojo rabbit, I'm just like a oh, huge fan of those. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And he's already a quirky guy as it is, even in his interviews. I love his interviews. Very quirky and fun. Great, great guy. But anyways, Back to the story synopsis, John. <laughs> oh, one other thing, though. He, the director, plays Hitler, which yes. is just a hilarious other side is, thing. So, yeah. So, going back uh, to the story. He plays a version of Hitler. I just watched an interview of him not too long ago where he was even saying where he didn't even want to in, uh, re review Hitler at all. He didn't want to mm -hmm. give him time. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like yeah. you're not even worth it for, you know, like the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. he just did it like 
from like a kid's imagination and stuff. Like he didn't watch any of his speeches or anything. He didn't even want to waste time, you know, trying to even re- research this guy to character stuff. He just did mm-hmm. it all from a comedy sense because it's coming from a 10 year old's creative mind kind of thing. Like what a 10 year old would kind of picture Hitler to be, I guess. But well, and then also a kid, it kind of, I mean, the Sandlot a little bit too. And then this kid, and, and, and as far as this kid had no friends. Didn't have a father oh, figure he had, really. He had one. He had one friend. Yeah, one friend. And the little kid that played his friend is hilarious. It's like the Chunk best. from Goonies, but like, the oh, it's, it's it's so perfect. But uh, so I mean, the kid's not a popular kid, and so this is like his figment of his imagination embodying who he thinks is a national hero, which a lot of people did, and then also his absent father figure. So it's not really yeah. Hitler in that regard, which I, I'm sure a lot of people didn't see that film because they didn't even want to say, oh, they're they're glorifying Hitler. They're making... It's, it's you know still I mean? a fine, fine line to yeah, play. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it really is. Even just the thought of it, like, 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 I understand what he was doing, and, like, you know, in order to... To the, for this to play off the way it should have, that he did it the right way by going comedy with it. But there's mm-hmm. still those like very serious undertones. And I also thought it was very mm-hmm. interesting too. There was really spoilers alert just in case you haven't seen the movie, but they don't even like mention the Holocaust or camps at all, really. I can't remember that. Like I was trying to think about that. It was so weird, like to watch a movie where they're talking about like the hiding and, you know, and they would like hide and the families would hide them and stuff like that. But there was no mention of camps. I Maybe, maybe there was like one scene where they like take them away, but it's so interesting for like a world war two movie that's yeah, based on really this. On and they're, they don't even like touch on that really. I just, I just thought that was interesting. The only time it was mentioned is the girl. And again, you guys, if you, if you haven't seen the movie, maybe watch it before you get, cause we are going to get into kind of spoiler territory, but Basically, the, the girl that's being hidden, she talks about, yeah, my parents were taken. She doesn't go into detail because he's a young boy. She goes, my parents were taken to a place where you don't come back from. So that's maybe the and only then, hint at the concentration camps that you get. To be fair, maybe that's not, they didn't even know what was going on. Like, it's so tough. It's so tough to even know. Like, I don't even know what part of Germany this is really taking place. Is it taking place in Berlin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't see like. I don't I think, think they really say. Yeah. So I I was really confused, but. Berlin, I think, was one of the one of the few places where like Russians and Americans were kind of like doing the border thing where the people same were time, running yeah, towards yeah. the American side because the fear of uh-huh, the Russians uh-huh. and all that stuff like that. But um, anyways, back to the film, back to the, <laughs> the story. But he lives alone with his mom and then he finds out his mom's hiding a, a, mm-hmm. what, a, a 14 year old girl. And I think I think he's 10. Uh, uh, he's like he's like 10, 10 years old. too. Yeah. And yeah. she did such a fantastic job. She was like, wonderful. Yeah. Of, and also just like, even like the writing, I think I really enjoyed it. Like showing like how crazy the notion is of like the mindset of a kid mm-hmm. that, you know what I mean? Like depending on like how, how easy his mind was pers- persuaded. Like I think there, there was like with the first time he reads the, like the note to her and then right away she cries and she runs and all of a sudden he's like changes his stance right away. Like it's just so interesting. Like yeah. how, how, yeah. A, how, how a child's mind could so be easily molded. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you which know, I, the whole... which I think is one of the big things that really hit me about this film. And without going into too much detail is, you know, like when you're a kid, you pretty much believe whatever your elders tell you. And it's funny, his views with the girl were, were, were molded and swayed very easily. But what his parent, what, not what his mom, but what his elders were telling him as far as adults were telling him is that Hitler's a national hero, what their country's doing and right. And this can apply to anybody wherever in the world you live and what are your, whatever your beliefs are. I mean, just think of Christmas and, you know, Easter and all these things. Like you, you believe these things until you get to a certain age, but you're very, like you said, you're very impressionable. And so even though this is applying to World War II and Hitler and things like that, there's a lot to take away from this as far as like how like you said, easily molded your mind can be whatever age you are, but especially when you're a young child. Yeah. And I also liked how the film really showed like how cr- not crazy, but absurd the idea of like the Nazi party. Like every time they enter the room, everyone's like, you know, hail, hail Hitler. And they like do it <laughs> oh, to like hilarious. every single like person, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. That, that this was yeah. even a thing. If it was, I, I, I don't know if that was a thing where they literally had to do it to every single person go in the room. One one, yeah. But like, like the idea I think behind it is, is like, this is so ridiculous that ridiculous. they would even have yeah. to do this in the first place. Like mm-hmm. to every single person, like, oh, but that was such an intense scene. 
where it was like comical but very stressful too at the same time yes. and yes. like even the whole thing where she just pops out of the wall and she says she's the sister and all that like i was not expecting that i thought it was gonna be a whole thing where they're like searching the walls and everything and i was just like whoa mm -hmm. that they totally went a way i did not expect them to go and and, it, and it's it's one of those movies where and I, I really like applaud these types of movies where it can take you through the full gamut of emotions some movies are just funny and idiotic like mm -hmm. i love the movie Step Brothers, but you're not watching that movie to get smarter right you're, you're watching that just for entertainment there's other movies where you watch where they're very intense or just they're very dark you could probably say joker's one of those at least you know mm -hmm. nick nick fellows or but this movie hits the ground running making you laugh hysterically but touching on very like you said the thin line subject totally matter changes throughout the film yes for sure. but then they'll take you to these very serious moments to where it's making you think a lot more but then they'll take you back so you ride this emotional roller coaster but you come out the other end feeling hopeful but you definitely travel this journey and there's some tragic things that happen mm -hmm. in the movie it's not just a comedy happy movie all the way through and they yeah. do give do you know respect to the subject matter they don't handle it lightly like you said even though it is interesting they never mentioned the holocaust it's specifically just very, it's just so interesting you know what i mean like i don't know like if it's if they would have went there the film could have got a lot darker than it than it already was kind of underlying tones and that's not where the director wanted to go maybe with like did theme. you ever see the uh the movie the boy in the striped pajamas no, I don't know if I've seen the boy in the circle. Time. Well, this is about a boy that that lived in a house that, that and he was he he was the son of a German kind of commander that was kind of running one of the the concentration camps, and so he didn't even know when they moved there what was going on, but he found out and ended up making friends with a boy that lived on the other side of this barbed wall, which was you know a Jewish boy in striped pajamas, you know, in like a prison outfit basically. And so maybe based on where you lived in, in Germany, you would, that would be more apparent to you. Mm. Or maybe everybody knew. I don't know. We'd have to dig into the history more. Yeah, that's, but that's so like you said, maybe it's just a creative touchy. choice. Yeah. 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 So like there's a couple movies in the past where they were like comedy slash like mm -hmm. Hitler, right? We have, I think it was like 1940s, the, the great dictator, Charlie Chaplin. Mm -hmm. I think it was his first talking movie too, where he didn't, you know, he was, yeah, he was also, um, Jewish. I, he came over even way, way, way before. I think. I think he was brought up in England, actually. And, and anyways, but um, he was. He did not agree at all with Hitler's views because mm -hmm. Hitler, before the war with the Olympics and other things, there was just some stuff where it was just like red, red flag warning. You could already like, tell not, it was leading like, to a, a bad place. Yeah. So, like, he made this film that's very comical. I think there's even a part where he's like playing with the world, and he's like, you know, and he has fun with the accent and the jokes and the. The generals, like the crazy ideas, people will jump out a window. It's just like a bizarre, crazy film, and it yeah, yeah. it was like even it was 1940, like like that was like they're in the midst and, of the beginning of the war, practically at that point. And how was that received? Do you know how that was received at that point in time? You know, it's so interesting because like I don't know if it's because of that film or whatever, but Charlie Chaplin later on got on the communist list, and he was banned <laughs> from United States. Isn't that crazy? Like uh -huh. I don't know. That, that has crazy. anything to do with it or anything, but it's just like Charlie Chaplin, like such an icon was banned from the United States at one point. Cause there was yeah, claims that yeah. he was a communist and it was just like, what? Like, yeah, I anyways, forgot about but, that. Yeah. 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 And it's, I mean, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but um, I know it's one of it's highly like people love that film. It's a classic Charlie Chaplin. It's his first talking mm -hmm. role and it, it, it holds up pretty well too. I think, I mean, I haven't seen it recently but it's a movie i used to watch with my grandma and grandpa and it's very comical and it's and it's based on mm -hmm. you know history and stuff like that too oh no so i hadn't seen that film but you had kind of directed me towards some clips and i was like oh i didn't think that because this is kind of like we talked about very briefly in another podcast i think this is still very recent material you know this is there's we're starting to get to the point in time where the generation that lived through the Holocaust, there's not many people left. They're starting to pass away. A lot of them have. Yeah. So, and, and that starts to get you in weird territory because it's still recent, but the people that lived that aren't around anymore, you know, and it's, it's a thing among historians that they always say, how long is long enough to where now it's history to where you can, you can analyze it and talk about it. Mm kind of sub objectively and not have the subjectivity of it being so recent that it's affected people. Like you talk about the Mongols and you know, the, the Genghis Khan and all of them, like at least in this one podcast I listened to the hardcore history I mentioned before he says, he goes, you know, if you could like time machine teleport Hitler back to the Mongols, he'd be like a middle tier Mongol. Like they were mm -hmm. 
super, super ultra brutal. You know, they just didn't have the technology that he did. But that's so far removed. You can talk objectively about what happened back then and not be criticized for it. Whereas now, like, I'm surprised that even in 2020, 2019, we have a film that's covering Hitler this way. But then you show me the Charlie Chaplin clips. I was like, oh, this is not new necessarily at all. And then you also, there's some other ones you wanted to talk about too. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, Mel, Mel Brooks. We're no, you know, and you know what, you know, what I think it's different though from these, these two films, uh, the, well, it's the pr- producers and there's a whole thing about, you know, like the spring, sp- sp- springtime for Hitler. They try to find the worst play that will bomb opening night. You know, it's a full on, like, you know, they're singing about the Reich and all this other stuff. And you're just like, and I, the audience is like super pissed. Like what the heck's going on? But then I later on Hitler comes out and he's all very flamboyant and stuff. And um, mm-hmm. everyone starts to laugh because they think it's a comedy and it ends up, ends up mm-hmm. doing well. And they're like, no, because they, they, they needed the show to bomb to make money. It, it totally backtracks. And it's a fantastic film. Gene, Gene, Gene Wilder's in it. I mean, anytime, oh, anytime he's in a film with Mel, Mel Brooks is just going to be fantastic. Who, does he play Hitler? Who does he play? No. So G- Gene Wilder plays, plays one of the producers. So there's like he's, oh, he's like okay, an, okay. An, an accountant who dreams of being a producer, and this guy he's like looking at the numbers, and he's like, "Well, technically, you can make more from a flop than you can a hit." And the guy's like, "What? You know, wait, what do you mean?" And then that's when they, they get into the shenanigans, and it's a. But what's so interesting about those two films? It's a comedy based in comedy's world, and they stay in the comedy world. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So what's interesting about Jojo Rabbit is you're kind of weaving between weave back and forth, yeah. And and it remind me a lot of. Um, Life is Beautiful. I think it was like an Italian film, but it takes place during the Holocaust and like the dad and his son and the dad's trying to make it fun. Like there's even a scene where like the commander's telling him to do something and the the dad goes up there to translate and he's translating jokes mm-hmm. to the kid and everyone else is like, what's going on here? But the kid's like, oh, uh-huh. this is funny or whatever. And I think even the last scenes of the, one of the last scenes of the movies, the son's hiding and he's he, the guy has a gun to his back because he's you know obviously going to take him somewhere or whatever. And he's like, making it like a joke for the kid. And it's just like, you know, it's just one of those like weird kind of like humor with, you know, ser- seriousness and stuff. And that's kind of what like, that movie was. It was it a humorous movie or was it about a man trying to make it make this situation yes, livable and not scarring for his yeah, son. So it was a serious it movie. It's just, but yeah, just, you know, which the funny to, to me makes it. Yeah. 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 But still makes it a very powerful movie. because It's like, mm-hmm as dire of a situation as the father and the son are in the father's still trying to make it to where his son is able to bear that. So I'm going to have to watch that again. That's another yeah. one that Nick, I thought I've seen a lot of movies, apparently not, but so Nick directed <laughs> well, me towards some so clips to watch out there. There's so many films, but I was just yeah, thinking yeah. like, that's kind of the closest thing we have maybe to Jojo rabbit because it's like, mm-hmm. you have like, I don't want to say like funny. Well, you do have funny moments. There's some very funny moments. Like, Oh, the there's knife, some hilarious. The knife when it hits the tree, even the whole like grenade part and like the swimming lessons. And then the guy designing his outfit and he's coming out. There's, the the, there's and, funny moments all the way throughout. It's, it's not like one of those comedies that, so it, Nick described it perfectly where it weaves in and out of comedy and seriousness, but a lot of comedy movies, they run out of steam in the last quarter of the movie is just not funny anymore. Really? This stays funny all the way through. It's just, it starts out pure comedy and then they start weaving in the seriousness. And again, there's very few, like as far as how it made me feel where it took me through the range of emotions. Like when I think of a movie that I, my family and I, when I live in California, we used to watch every year is planes, trains and automobiles. And there's parts where you're laughing hysterically and there's parts where you're almost crying. That's one of those movies where I feel it weaves you in and out. And this is obviously a much more serious subject matter, but it weaves you in and out and takes you to that gamut of emotions, which not many movies can do. Usually a movie takes a stance and they just kind of stick with that, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I, I really enjoyed the film and I, yeah. I, well, I went in with expectations and exceeded my expectations, which is always good when you watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went in with very high expectations for this film and it, and it exceeded because I thought, honestly, I thought it was going to lose steam. Like I thought, well, there's no way they can keep that movie going the entire time, having it funny and having it keep its impact. And I, yeah. I, I came out with my expectations far exceeded. Mm-hmm. And I, I think honestly, this is going to be a movie that people remember over a long period of time mm-hmm. because one, it's, it's, it's very significant. And like you said, this is maybe the first movie that's kind of, done it this particular way where it's it's woven in that's the, the other one, one you i can really compare to i mean i think yeah. it's it's kind of its own thing because it's mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. way that hitler's even portrayed it's like from a child's imagination too 
So yeah. it's not even yeah. like Hitler as we know kind of thing. No, it's, it's not Hitler at all. Hitler. Yeah, yeah. So. But it's, you know, it's, it, but it's like from a, a citizen's point of view, what you might think if you never met a person, like the heroes that you have, what are the heroes you have actually like if you met them versus what you mm. think about them in your mind, you know? So it's, it's, it's one of those things. But honestly, like without a doubt, without any, any like hesitation, this is my favorite movie of, of 2019. Like it's a good I one. I really like the, it's a good yeah, one. I really like the Joker. I thought 1917 was amazing. Yeah, was I like once upon a time in Hollywood, but oh, yeah, Jojo really rabbit, good. I had the expectations going in and it exceeding them coming out. And to me, that's, that's like a special movie because that very rarely happens for me. Dude, it was fantastic. So I, I really liked it. I really liked the way it was shot too. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I really like how it changed too, depending on the moods. Cause like you went in, it was like really funny at the beginning, right? Like heavy on the comedy mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And it felt like quirky Wes Anderson. And then I kind of like how it kind of switches its tone. Like you still have like, but it's still kind of mm-hmm. like flat framing and stuff, but it's really more dynamic too. And it might also be because of like the mindset, right? Cause we always think of like maybe Wes Anderson films as more. I don't want to say kids, but like, it's more like that quirky imagination kind of like, you know, the flat yeah, framing. Yeah. It's almost like a storybook kind of like we're watching. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's so interesting. Cause it's like, as the, maybe Jojo's learning and developing more of his mindset, mm-hmm. it's like, here's mm-hmm. the flat illusion. You know what I mean? That, you know, yeah. but then like his perspective shifts. And I think the camera actually shifts perspective a lot later on where you get more dynamic shots compared to the flat shots and stuff. So maybe that's, Maybe that was part of the process, <laughs> you know, like cinematography is beautiful. There's certain shots where they will follow, like say they'll follow the perspective of the boy and you'll, they'll lead your eye to something. I'm thinking of a, a pair of shoes. And when you see those pair of shoes, oh, yeah. you're just like as crushed as, as the little boy is. And very, very I don't know what vision. to call us. You guys, this is like a semi spoiler podcast. I'm trying not to give away things. But I already things shouted. I already about. shouted spoilers. Yeah. But, but <laughs> if you haven't seen it, even if we spoil a little bit for you, definitely see this movie. It's, it's going to be must, out on video it's soon. A it's a must still watch. Theaters. It's a must watch, I think. And I don't say that about a lot of movies. There's a lot of movies I like, but there's some movies where I just say, oh, like you definitely you know, need to see this. And, I know, yeah. I've been re- recommending it to tons of people since I've watched it. I'm like, have you seen Jojo yeah. Rabbit? You guys need to see Jojo Rabbit kind of thing. So. Uh, uh, you know, probably the biggest praise I could say for a film. There's only a couple movies that I saw on video. And then literally the next day I would watch them again. Like I remember that happened with Fight Club. I thought that was, when I saw the trailer for that in theaters, I thought it was going to be a stupid movie. I saw it wow. at my friend's house, went out and bought it, watched it the next day. When Django came out, I didn't see that in theaters. I didn't know. I just knew Quentin Tarantino. I watched that probably three times in one week because I just, you know, it, it had that perfect combination. And then this is a movie where I literally almost watched the next day. I'm going to be watching it probably in the next week again. And very rarely do I do that. So amazing, amazing stuff. So yeah, good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Um, we've been reviewing other films. We have a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. We had a writer on for that one, which was really cool because we dived into scripts. And she did like her paper in college on Quentin Tarantino, which is friggin' awesome that she was able to join us for that podcast. And um, check out our other stuff at asart.space. All of our links are there. We'll leave stuff in the cards and in, in the description. Let us know other movies you think we should see. That maybe because we like Jojo Rabbit, we would like maybe these other films yeah, that have to yeah. do with I because I'm I'm big in World World War One, WW two, um, history and stuff like that. So I'm down to watch anything that's World War One or two related. I don't know what it is. But there's something about the stories and stuff around that time that's just so in, interesting for me. But. Mm. And they're getting know. really good. Maybe because so, my grandpa yeah. used to just sit there and tell me these stories, <laughs> like what happened, when, oh, you know, because he like lived through it. So it's just so oh. such a different like way. I'm just always so like I just eat it up like crazy that stuff. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next as art. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. <laughs>